Welcome. This presentation is going to go over possible risks and complications that, that can occur during your lumbar spine surgery. So let's get started. Informed consent. You have the right as a patient to be informed about your condition and the recommended procedure so that you may make the decision whether or not to undergo the procedure after knowing the risks and hazards involved. This disclosure is not meant to scare or alarm you. It is simply an effort to make you better informed so you, you may have or with you may give or withhold your consent to the procedure. As mentioned before, the purpose of this presentation is to mainly discuss the possible risks and, po and complications that can occur during your lumbar spine surgery and really to go over the medical terminology that is uh, written in your informed consent. So types of lumbar spine surgeries, there are different kinds of uh, lumbar spine surgeries out there and they're for um, different kinds of indications. So de decompressive surgeries, there's laminectomy and uh, disectomy. Usually these occur together. Laminectomy means the removal of the lamina in the spinal vertebrae. So here, is the lamina of the lumbar spine, okay? So removal of this part will allow the surgeon to perform a disectomy, which is cutting or removing part of the disc that is herniated. Here we see this opening, so the lamina was removed, and here we're able to see the disc herniation, which allows the surgeon to do the disectomy. So another kind of uh, lumbar spine surgery is a fusion surgery. A fusion surgery means that there is going to be hardware that is going to be inserted in your lumbar spine with pedicle screws, rods, and uh, with a cage that has bone graft packed in order to achieve the end goal, which is fusion of two vertebrae together. So there is a posterior lumbar interbody fusion in which the surgeon will insert the hardware from the posterior side, which is from the back side. Another type of fusion surgery is called an A-lift or an anterior lumbar interbody fusion. So this is when the surgeon will go from the front part um, of the spine and do a fusion surgery. This normally only takes place at the location of L5-S1. Infections. So infections can definitely occur after any kind of surgical procedure and they can require either oral or intravenous antibiotics. Um, infections can be very superficial or it can also be deep. Um, if an infection is indeed a deep infection, um, this can require Dr. Liu to reopen the wound and remove the surgical implants and kind of debris the whole wound site. Incisional complications. So infections can occur and this will be considered a superficial infection. Um, Depending on what kind of surgery you have, it could be robust or it could leave a really wide scar. Um, slawing of the skin around the incision can occur, uh, but one of the the main um, complications that it occur that can occur with incision is called a uh, wound dehiscence, which means that uh, the wound is unable to heal. So failure of healing and the wound will just remain and kind of break open. So this occurs mainly with our diabetic patients who have uncontrolled diabetes or really high sugars, also with our immunocompromised patients or uh, patients who have autoimmune disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis um, and who have been on short-term or long-term use of steroids. This can also occur with our smokers. 
And also uh, another incisional complication can be a scar forming around um, the spinal cord or nerve resulting in recurrence of symptoms. Postoperative hematoma. So this is very rare, but uh, hematoma is the medical term used for collection of blood inside the surgical wound. So as you can see here in the picture, here is the scar or the um, incision. And then you can see this kind of collection of, of blood and bruising, which tells us that there is a hematoma on the other side or inside of the skin. Okay. Um, this can cause compression of the spinal cord and or nerves resulting uh, in pain, worsening pain, leg pain, weakness, numbness and tingling, and can even occur can even lead to a bowel or bladder dysfunction. So please let us know or let your nurse know if you have any of these symptoms after your surgery. Nerve root or spinal cord injury. This can always occur with any kind of spine surgery. It can result in motor paralysis or weakness, loss of sensation, loss of uh, bowel or bladder control, requiring a catheter, can lead to sexual dysfunction. Injury to the dura. So the dura is a thick membrane that surrounds the brain and the spinal cord. As you can see in the picture, it is this dark outline, um, the purple outline, outlining the spinal cord and uh, the brain. So injury to the dura can occur during surgery and it could lead to a spinal fluid leak um, some of the symptoms that you can have include headache, photophobia, which is light sensitivity, loss or alteration of sexual function, possible erection and ejaculation dysfunction in males, and uh, you can have nausea and vomiting as well. So rare injuries uh, that can occur to the surrounding organs uh, during your lumbar spine surgery can occur. So damage to adjacent structures uh, include but are not limited to nerves, vessels, uh, the organs located in your abdomen and thoracic area, your bladder, bowel, and big vessels. Okay. So especially if you're having an anterior lumbar into body fusion, big vessels can rupture and lead to injury, which can cause uh, excessive blood loss and possibly even death. Um, but please do not let this uh, alarm you. A vascular surgeon will be present with Dr. Liu throughout the entire surgery. Um, he is there to assist Dr. Liu in exposing the lumbar spine and to treat any vascular risks or complications. Pseudoarthrosis. So this can occur with uh, patients receiving a fusion. The definition of pseudoarthrosis is a failure of union or a failure of fusion. Um, this leads to chronic pain and can lead to some of the symptoms that you were having before your surgery, such as numbness and tingling in your lower extremities or shooting pain in your lower extremities. As you can see in the picture here, um, at your vertebrae five and vertebrae four, here was uh, the fusion, but you can see here in a blow up picture that it's not completely fused, that we have this gap in the middle, okay? So this is pseudoarthrosis. So spinal instrumental complications. This is another complication that occur with um, any kind of fusion surgeries. This includes screw loosening, pulling out of a screw, breakage or fracture of the actual implant, and migration of the implant. So as you can see in the picture here on your right, um, here the screws are kind of unscrewing and coming out, okay? Continuation of spinal instrumentation complications, uh, malposition of implant can result, 
um, resulting in injury of the surrounding structures, such as the arteries, nerves, muscles, chest cavity, lungs, heart, aorta, and other major organs. Complications of spinal instrumentation can require emergent treatment, um, including reoperation, replacement, and uh, repositioning or just removing the entire implant itself. Malpositioning of implants may result in injury to the spinal cord, nerve roots, or even the dura. Can cause or lead weakness, paralysis, numbness, um, bowel and bladder dysfunction, and sexual dysfunction. As you can see here in the picture, this is a malposition um, of the implant here. Right here. This is malposition of the implant, which led to a uh, correction. So now the screw is totally within the vertebrae itself. Risk of anesthesia. Um, this can occur with any kind of surgical procedure um, that requires anesthesia. Uh, you can, it can lead to cardiac arrest, stroke, blindness due to prolonged surgical positioning, risk of skin breakdown due to pressure ulcers, um, nerve injury from positioning due to length of the surgical case. And problems associated with uh, breathing tube, including dysphagia, which is a medical term for difficulty swallowing, and dysphonia, which is voice impairment. Keep in mind that dysphagia and dysphonia um, can occur and can linger on for a couple days after the surgery, but should resolve after a couple weeks. Deep venous thrombosis, also known as DVT. This is a blood clot that can develop in the leg due to immobility and blood pooling. This is an emergency. Symptoms include swelling, redness, localized pain, tender to touch. As you can see in the picture here of the right leg, see how different it is compared to the left leg. This is obviously very red, swollen. Um, patients will have a lot of pain with uh, moving their ankle, will have excruciating pain when they're trying to walk. Pulmonary embolism. So this is a blood clot that travels to the lungs. Uh, this is also an emergency. Symptoms include chest pain, shortness of breath, um, a hyper, a pulmonary hypertension. Um, and this could definitely lead to deaths, which is why this is an emergency. So if you have any of these kinds of symptoms, when you're at the hospital or even when you're discharged, you need to proceed to the emergency room and call our office immediately. Uh, pulmonary embolism will require long-term use of blood thinners, um, placement or filter, and or additional medical or sur surgical management. Blood loss can obviously occur with any kind of surgery. Um, if the blood loss is pretty extreme or large, then it can require transfusion. Um, but our blood transfusion rate is very low uh, with our spine surgeries. And there's obviously some associated risks of disease being transmitted via blood transfusion. Uh, with blood loss, you can have anemia, which is low blood level, resulting in a stroke or heart attack. So substantial uncontrollable loss may require additional surgery to control the loss itself. Uh, this will lead to an emergent abdominal surgery and arterial embolization. Other sequelae that can occur after your surgery includes pain and discomfort from the operation itself. Um, we must remind you that there is no guarantee that all symptoms will improve following your surgery. Um, adjacent level disease can occur, which requires uh, can require a secondary surgery. And uh, there's 
always the possibility of expected or unexpected risks or complications that can occur after your surgery. So adjacent level disease, also known as junctional kyphosis, this is a condition that sometimes occurs after a spinal fusion surgery to join or lock two or more bones together. So uh, this can stop the natural motion of the spine at the cervical level, which leads to degenerative changes or develop de developmental changes can develop on the disc and joints above or below the actual fusion um, where the previous surgery was performed. So if you can see here in the picture, here at this level, um, we have the fusion surgery, okay? Here it is completely fused, but then at the level above the fusion and the level below the fusion, we're having or we're seeing some degeneration, okay? Because the load is increased above the level and below the level of the surgery. So many of these risks described in this presentation um, can occur with patients mainly with comorbidities, especially if their medical conditions are poorly controlled. These include if patients have a history of diabetes, history of high blood pressure, history of autoimmune disorders that are taking immunosuppressants. Um, also, patients who have autoimmune disorders may require long-term treatment of steroids, which can lead to prolonged healing time um, smokers and uh, other medical conditions, especially cardiac related. The surgery plan, uh, keep in mind that it could always change based on intraoperative findings, which mean based on uh, what Dr. Lou finds when he's actually in the um, operating room and doing the surgery. Um, if he needs to do plan B, then he'll do plan B, or if he needs to do plan C, then he will do plan C and will inform you of the changes um, after the surgery. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, just please let us know.